Thanks, everybody, for inviting me here today. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm here to talk about uh, connecting customers to the natural gas distribution system. In the spirit of inclusion, I've extended it, uh, the definition from customer to stakeholder, uh, which includes local production and most recently some RNG as a supply source. So you may not know who we are, EPCOR. So in Ontario, we have gas operations in Elmer. We have a greenfield project in South Bruce. We have what is formerly called as Power in Collingwood, which is an electric utility. And we are just finishing building the um, water facility at Darlington. And we expect to commission that in early next year. We're essentially a utility company. We operate across North America. We have 2 million customers and about 3,500 employees. And we're municipally owned. We have an interesting governance model. We're owned by the city of Edmonton, but we raise our money in capital markets. So our credit rating is important and we have um, um, a completely independent skill-based board. We have about 200 million invested in the province of Ontario with a goal to invest at least 500 million. So always looking for more opportunities. Here are our gas operations. Uh, it's a little bit detailed, but you can see Elmer at the bottom. Uh, we do bring local production in from Legasco off Lake Erie. And then on the right-hand side, you see our gas operations in South Bruce. Um, this was supported by the gas expansion dollars from the Ontario government. And we have a steel pipe that goes from Doorknock through to King Carden and down. And uh, at some point, we'll be looking to reinforce that south end of the system where we're seeing some pressure issues. So just a few principles in connecting customers and our obligation as a utility. We have an obligation to serve customers. Um, so anybody that asks to be served, we, we are required to serve them and we're happy to do so. And the second principle is that the total portion of the expansion should not lead to rates of existing customers over the long term. So uh, in the instance we want to connect a customer and it's going to lead to increased rates, we do a calculation and sometimes they have to, um, they have to provide a capital contribution. We have a defined service territory. Uh, but amendments can be made through the regulatory process. Um, as an example, down in Elmer, right along, we're right along the border of uh, Enbridge, and we do have some customers in their franchise area. It was just more economical for us to serve those customers than, than Enbridge, so uh, better for the customer to be, to be serviced by us. Um, and we actually competed for the South Bruce franchise with Enbridge as well, so we do have competition uh, for the gas franchise uh, here in Ontario. Everything we do has to meet the customer demand and we develop long-term supply plans, either three or five year supply plans um, that are rev reviewed by the energy board and ultimately our pricing is approved by the energy board through the quarterly rate mechanisms um, that we fly file with them on a quarterly basis. These are our supply planning objectives. So these are the kind of the trade-offs that we have to think through and meet when we're putting together our long-term supply plans, cost effectiveness reliability, security of supply, and public policy. We have a scorecard. It's filed with the Energy Board if anybody's interested. Uh, but in terms of cost effectiveness, you know, our, our counterparty creditworthiness, our efficient use of storage, the diversity of counterparties, and diversity of our supply portfolio are some of the items on that scorecard. In terms of reliability and security of supply, the number of days our customers are interrupted, and the assets that we acquire to, peak, to meet peak day design day. And then on public policy, we think about demand-side management, community expansion, and renewable natural gas. And I expect on the public policy front that uh, um, that'll continue to evolve as we evolve the utility. I think it's important to think about what we do today, which is we plan to meet our peak day customer um, demand. And I think that's going to change. And if you think about electricity, you know, when consumers are going to be prosumers, in other words, they could be generating electricity back into our distribution grid. Um, and certainly on the gas side, thinking about alternatives on the supply side to long-term pipe and what some of those alternatives might be. So here's what we have in our toolbox, our contractual arrangements with customers so we can enter into interruptible type contracts. We obviously have long haul upstream pipe. We have seasonal storage, we have daily balancing services, we have hub services, we have authorized overrun, we have local production, and most recently we have renewable natural gas. The picture that you see is actually the infrastructure that brings the Legasco production into our system in South Elmer. If I were to think about 
electricity and electricity planning. I think this, this toolbox will look pretty similar um, in future on electricity uh, rather than just taking power off the ISO grid. And we just saw a really interesting um, presentation on storage. But again, um, I think that toolbox will change as we see more and more customers kind of adopt distributed energy resources that'll be moving back into the distribution grid. So how we think about the distribution grid, I think is gonna change dramatically over the coming years. Um, and even how we think about energy and the, and the gas system versus the power system, and ultimately how those two come together. For local production, it can be firm, which has a demand charge payment in addition to the commodity piece, or it can just be interruptible, we take it as it comes. Some of the reasons we like local production, it's an alternative into entering into long-term upstream pipeline contracts. We're seeing increased interveners as we should in terms of should we be investing in 30, 40, 50 year long haul pipe. Um, and we really need to think through what alternatives that we have at our disposal in order to meet our, our, our customer demand. It can be more economical than upstream reinforcement or trucking in CNG, certainly when we contracted for firm local production in Elmer, our alternatives were to truck in CNG um, or enforcement with Enbridge, which um, came at a price of uh, much more expensive than, than the alternative. So there are certainly pricing advantages. Um, in South Bruce, trucking in CNG when the roads are closed much of the winter is just, is just not feasible and certainly wouldn't meet reliability. I will say developing pricing can be challenging. Um, there is no market per se in, in our distribution area. The market is Dawn, but that, in my view, um, may not be the appropriate pricing mechanism. And you can think about it from an electricity perspective as well. If you want to develop um, local resources behind the distribution system, if they're simply priced off the ISO clearing mechanism, the economics may not work. Uh, you really kind of have to think about it as... Um, what are the alternatives to that ultimate burner tip price to the consumer? And that should probably play a role, but we'll see that evolve. Any capital infrastructure that we put in place, again, has to be reviewed and approved by the Ontario Energy Board. So I'm going to end it there, I think. Um, and perhaps we can chat a little bit more when we get to our uh, Q&A portion. So thank you very much.